I think my daughter is crying out and trying to tell me something. She keeps posting on her YouTube channel videos about being molested and abused and talking about cutting. Take a look at this. What's up, YouTube? It's me, Ron Osteris Chuck Red, and I'm back on your screen. So I'm going to tell you really serious things. If you ever been touched inappropriately if you was younger than seven, <sighs> tell someone, don't keep it a secret. So I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. In the fifth grade. Yeah. 11 years old. I was raped. So, I'm tell you something. I was fucking raped by a fucking teacher, bro. And I, and she told me to do stuff. I, I t she took advantage of me. So, you know, child. So, and this shit was happening for years now. I'm fucking, I'm 19 years old now. I was uh, like 10 or 11 years old to happen. So, so if you haven't been raped, molested, or sexually abused before, you got to tell someone, don't keep it in to yourself. That's what happened. I kept it into myself. So, and, um, so it's a lot of shit going on in my life. So, and, um, so it's like, like, it's like she wants me to not fucking have sex with her. I don't like. She's so fucking weird, bro. I don't even know why that happened. Just so fucking young. So that's why I had to let this shit out. I kept in here. Fucking depression, anxiety, PTSD, and borderline personality disorder. If I was gay, I'd be into it, but I'm not. It's not funny, it's not a verbal feeling. Nobody can come for you, so this is like this. Being fucking molested by somebody you hardly you really know, but it's like it's not fair to you at all. So Yes. Yeah, so the shit I'm talking about, like, I'm fucking raped, and, yeah, I fucking hold your tears in, and, like, you're, you're naked, and strip naked, got fucked up, and your personality changes, like, you wanna fucking get, re get revenge or something, like, fucking knock your teeth out or something, that's what I wanted to do. And I can't. Um, so you can't wait and do shit. Like, um, she told me not to take this, say another peep out of my mouth if I told someone this. And I, and I tried. I have to let this out. So that's why I'm telling you this now. So it's like happened more than once. I want to get the pain away. I'm sad and now I'm depressed and all that shit. So don't let him take advantage of you. Okay. My daughter keeps saying this happened by a teacher when she's in the fifth grade, but she talks as if this is something that's going on in the present since when she's saying the woman strips her butt naked and wants her to have sex with her. And she says she'd be into it if she was gay, but she isn't. And the current emotions of being depressed. And it's like my daughter's speaking in clues because she's afraid of being retaliated against or getting in trouble. And she has every right to be because she's spoken about this before. We both brought this to the attention of other people when we voiced our concerns before in the past. When I voiced my concerns to the Department of Children and Family Services Supervisor Rosalind Bailey, as well as my caseworker Becky Sawyers and Amanda Clark, the Ohio mentor caseworker for my daughter. They would retaliate against my daughter. Nothing would change. They would take stop her visits abruptly. I would go weeks without seeing her. They would take her phone away from her when I could not see her. And I have not been able to see her. Uh, Tiffany Mahoney, the supervisor now, has stopped the visits. They have not reinstated them. I haven't seen my daughter in person for about eight months. I don't know what's going on with her. I've tried to bring awareness to the situation um, by making videos before exposing what's going on and all they do is retaliate against us and retaliate against my daughter. And there is something that needs to be done because if my daughter is truly suffering and getting abused and they're allowing this to happen, this is something that God is going to be judging for. I asking that, you know, my daughter shouldn't have to keep going through this. This is not the first time 
she has spoken about abuse. She has spoken about it before, about a year ago, as you can recall this video here. What's up, YouTube? It's Trivia Mac 2015. I'm back, part five. And um, we're still going to talk about molestation, rape, sexual abuse. In fifth grade, I was fucking molested by a teacher. She... <sighs> it was like end of the music end of music and um and i i got pulled over and um she pulled she she oh my god it's so, this is so hard to tell she locked me in the room like i don't know it's like a, a dark classroom i guess i don't know and um and assume and just take off my clothes and rape me. I can't believe that shit. It's like a horrible feeling. My soul is just horrible. It's not good to be raped. And anyway, I I attempt self harm after that happened. I I was thinking about killing myself, right? And I was thinking about killing myself. I'm not lying. I was trying to commit suicide. I was cutting myself, and I was just attempting self harm. And I was like, I'm gonna die right now. I wanna kill myself. I haven't told anyone this has happened. I want to die. I really want to just, just kill myself. I, I don't, I'd rather be dead than doing this shit happen all the time. I was fucking raped. I was fucking I was molested. You gotta tell someone. I hold it in for the whole, I hold it all in. I hold my tears. I hold the situation in. I haven't tell anyone. I, I I couldn't hold my tears in. I just I just lie. Say I was bullied by somebody, and I can't tell someone I was so I was molested. I I, I didn't, didn't want to tell anyone. I just lied. Said I'm bullied. I've been bullied. <sighs> so much shit. I I was thinking about. I want to put a gun through my brain. I just want to put a, put a fucking bullet through my head right now. Thinking about it. It's the worst experience ever. It's the worst fucking thing ever. I wasn't, my heart hurts thinking in it. I'm having flashbacks about it every day of night. I just want to die right now. Like thinking about it. I'm just thinking about fucking killing myself. I hate myself. I hate it when I hate when it happens. I hate when I hate myself because I wasn't telling anyone. I just want to die. I don't want nobody touching me. I don't want nobody fucking me every day. I don't want nobody kicking my ass and I have to suck it up. I just. Now, just like the first video, my daughter's talking about she'd rather be dead than have to go through this every day, someone abusing her and, and molesting her. And she's speaking as if it's something that's currently going on and not something that happened in her past. And when she speaks about being placed in a room, she says that the woman locked her in a room, but then she says it's a dark classroom. She doesn't know. And it's like, how do you not know that it's a classroom? And I believe she's speaking in, in hidden code because she wants to to, to explain what's going on she wants to divulge what's happening and she's crying out for help but she knows that she can't explicitly come out and say that this is happening because they're threatening her like she said the woman said she better not hear a peep of her talking about it and anytime my daughter had ever said anything about anything that was going on in foster care anytime she mentioned anything to me even when they were forcing her to take medication and wasn't making her feel well they would retaliate against her by not allowing her to have visits anymore even though she had visits on the case plan they would just stop the visits abruptly whenever they felt like it she would go weeks sometimes over a month without seeing me 
they would take her phone from her, the phone that we had bought, and we're paying the monthly bill on. They remove her cell phone. Amanda would come over. Becky and Amanda would take her her cell phone, and she was always retaliated against. My son was retaliated against as well. And this is something that is happening throughout the Department of Children and Family Services in these group homes in the foster care system, where it's very corrupt, where the children do not have a voice. They cannot express what's going on. They cannot talk about you know if they're being abused or if they're in a situation that's detrimental to them and they monitor everything they make sure that everything is screened where the child cannot come out and say what's going on and vulnerable children this is how they're being you know abused and neglected and they're getting away with this and so after I watched that first video after my daughter had posted that video I left a comment on her page because I kind of can read behind the lines I wanted to know you know if, if let her know that, hey, you know, I believe that she's talking about a teacher, but I let her know, you know, just in case this is something that's currently happening or just in case it happens again, I told her, you know, as you can see from this comment here, I'm going to put it right here. I let her know that, hey, you know, this is the precaution you could take. You can, you know, speak to someone confidentially and you can contact, you know, someone in authority or contact these certain services to report this abuse. I said, you don't have to go to this. So my daughter liked the comment. She loved the comment. She heart my comment. I got a um, notification here. As you can see that she actually liked the comment, but I went back on her page and under that YouTube um, video, my comment is suddenly gone. So it's no longer there. And so the other comments are still there, but the comment isn't there anymore. So I'm not sure if, you know, she got some type of slack about it or they made her delete it or not because, you know, my daughter had a whole bunch of videos on her YouTube channel and she suddenly deleted everything. All the videos are deleted and removed. So again, I feel like they're, they're coarse to, to removing all this stuff because she had all this, these videos up there is like a lot of evidence on things that were going on, you know, problems that she was having. But, you know, like I said, I believe that, you know, I'm not for certain, but I do believe, I strongly believe that something's going on and the Holy Spirit is leading me to watch these videos. And I listened to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I talked about it before, about the abuse. I tried to expose before in videos about the abuse that my daughter was facing in foster care. And, you know, it was one of the reasons why they had kept my daughter permanently because they wanted me to stop these videos. And Tanya Cross at that time had a meeting with me. We had a meeting with Tanya Cross and Rosalind Bailey, the facilitator and the supervisor at that time. And they were telling me if I don't stop these videos and I'm, I'm being combative by not listening to them and that they would maybe they would change their original, I guess, reunification plan to keeping her permanently. So that's when they came up with that PPL thing, that permanently place living arrangement where they kept my daughter because at first they had under her plan reunification for her to come home and be reunited with me. That's why my daughter never got to, a chance to come home, even though my son came home for six months. But my daughter never came home because they didn't like the fact that I was making these videos. And this is something that I feel is done to evade what's going on. They're trying to cover up what's actually going on. They're saying my daughter has borderline personality disorder and schizophrenia, taking all these different medications. Now, suddenly everybody has schizophrenia now that she's reporting abuse and saying these things has happened to her. And, you know, before when my daughter was, you know, getting therapy, I've taken her to therapists before in the past when she was younger. And, and all they would say is that she had depression. And yes, that she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder from being abused when she was younger by her father. But of course, her biological father has been out of her life for a long time. It'd been well over 10 years. They were actually, Children and Family Services were the ones who were trying to reintroduce him into, you know, my children's lives, even though they knew that there were allegations of abuse against him. So it just shows you how little they care about sexual abuse and, you know, any type of abuse and neglect when it comes to children. They take the children out of the home, but they allow these things to happen while the children are in foster care and in these group homes and in these facilities and environments. Now, the visits between my daughter were taken. Um, they were stopped abruptly. Like I said, they blamed it on the fact that my daughter was being combative or I guess not getting along well with her foster parent. They said it has something to do, they suspected it has something to do with the visits because every time I guess she came home from my house, they said that the foster parent, my daughter would get into it. And so they retaliated against my daughter by stopping her visits for about, it's been eight months now. And so this is one of the things I was very upset about because it's like you assume that my daughter's upset and getting into an altercation with her foster mother based off the fact she visited with me when you never thought that it's possible or perhaps that maybe my daughter was acting out towards this woman because there's abuse going on. This is one of the cues and one of the signs that a child is being molested or abused or something is happening. 
when they start acting out. And there's been a lot of things, like I said, that's been covered up. Now, the visits were stopped and there was really no other reason. My daughter was enjoying the visits, but whenever she did come to the visits, she would actually divulge things to us. She was showing us here, if you look at these pictures, these were taken back in June of 2022 in the summertime before my daughter's visit stopped in August. As you can see, she was cutting herself. She was showing me all these marks all over her arms. She had all these marks all over her. And she was telling me she was cutting herself because she wanted to, you know, come home and she missed being with her family. And now that she's making this video, I believe it was because of the abuse that's been going on now that I'm listening to this video. Not only that, they have covered up abuse in the past. Like I said, my daughter talked about abuse at the hands of a person who had been abusing me as well. And this was also brushed under the rug and nothing was done about it. So, you know, I'm speaking up right now because, again, my daughter has... We've been having our rights violated. We have not been able to get any help. I've spoken out as best I can. And every time we go to court, um, the judge and everyone rules in favor of Children and Family Services. They lie about everything, pretty much telling, saying that my daughter's doing well. Anytime there's an altercation between her and the foster mother or anything that goes on, they never mention it in court. They say everything is doing well, despite the fact that, you know, my daughter has had these episodes, no matter or, or despite the fact that things have gone on, they never mention that in court. They never talk about the fact that my daughter has gained a significant amount of weight and that she's suffering from diabetes right now. Um, the last time we were in court, they said she was at a healthy weight. So it's like all this stuff is happening and it's like nothing, no one ever mentions it. And even the court does know they continue to keep ruling in favor of Children and Family Services. So they're part of the problem because they have actually agreed to, you know, gave an order for my daughter to be kept in their custody. So she's suffering here, not allowed to go home, 19 years old and possibly being subjected to abuse on a regular daily basis. And this has been going on since she's been in foster care uh, before she even turned 16 years old. She's been there now for about three years. And this is some of the dangers that are going on. And I'm glad, like I said, um, recently posted a video where, you know, Paris Hilton had spoken out about her abuse that she had suffered and the fact that she couldn't tell her parents because everything was monitored and that she came out with this act recently where they're against child abuse in institutions and it needs to be something that's investigated and going forth and, you know, within the entire foster care system and the judicial system because a lot of children are suffering and this is something that God does not take, you know, um, lightly. He's going to be judging all those people who were accountable, you were in positions of authority, you watch these videos, you come across this stuff, you allow these children to be abused, all these nonprofit organizations. I've contacted many of uh, organizations that claim that they will help with civil rights and deal with children with disabilities and children who are being abused, and none of them could help me. None of them stepped forward. Only one tried to help me, and you know, it's not much that she actually was able to do or did do. And so this is the thing. This is why a lot of children are suffering because people hold a blind eye to abuse. Now, my daughter comes from a Christian family, a Christian background. Everyone knows our beliefs. They knew our beliefs before they took my children out of the home and she should not be subjected to any of this stuff. Everything about her has changed. She has, you know, been allowed to lose her virginity and be sexually violated since she has been in the custody of the Cuyahoga County Department of Children and Family Services. She has changed. I've noticed a lot of her behavior has changed, the way she is acting and, and carrying herself, talking about twerking, being exposed to certain things. And, you know, this is something that they do. They, they want to corrupt and defile God's children. They want to destroy God's purpose for his children and corrupt them for Satan's kingdom. And like I said before, if you're not, you know, whether you're being controlled by Satan or not, when you're influencing someone to go against the values of God, this is a spirit of Jezebel that is operating because Jezebel wants to destroy the purpose for God's creation. And when God does come to judge, these people will spend their time in hell. So I'm asking for those of you, those of you who are faithful and filled with the Holy Spirit, if you could start sharing this and getting the word out and start praying on behalf of my children, praying on behalf of other children so that this can oh, come down. Department so that children and Family Services had actually had a meeting and placed my daughter out of the foster care home around September of 2022 due to the fact that my daughter and the foster parent weren't getting along and the foster parent said she was overwhelmed. They placed her in an adult group home where I guess it did not work out for her because one night she was left just completely stranded with nowhere to go and no way to get home. The police had to escort her home because she was out by herself in the middle of the night. And also they said her grades were failing. So they ended up placing her back in the foster care home. My thing is this, they could have actually sent her back home. They could have filed a motion with the court to have her sent back home with me. There was no reason to ever have her removed from the house in the first place. Now they have her set to go to Walsh University in Canton, Ohio. They got her into college. She was accepted there, but they picked the college. They didn't look at any other colleges. And my thing is, 
racist. They didn't even try to find a college in Cleveland close by to her family's home. And it's like, they're just trying to keep her in Canton. And, and I feel away from her family and separated. They make it seem as if, you know, she's living here with us. She wouldn't be able to finish school and she has to be there in order to finish school. My thing is this, had the kingdom of darkness had not been attacking my children while they were in school, they would have been allowed to get their education. They would have graduated and had their degrees if they had not been bothering my children, attacking them and keeping them from having successful education and time in school. And had they not been attacking me while I was on the jobs, I could have been working and obtaining money to afford to take care of my children. The kingdom of darkness stopped everything. And I'm just asking for all of you to start praying and helping me and just to bring down the stuff that's going on within the Children and Family Services and the ju juvenile judicial system for everyone. Thank you.